forever. Dog. Race chaser. Hello. 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 And welcome back to Race, Race Chaser, Chaser. <laughs> a podcast dedicated to the discussion, dissection, and dissemination of every single episode of RuPaul's, RuPaul's Drag, Race. Drag Race, starting from the very beginning. This is the beginning. <laughs> My name's Alaska. What's yours? I'm Willem. Last week, Morgan won the challenge and Sahara Davenport and Shangela lip sync for their lives. Shangela went home, but as we all know, that lit a fire under her ass to come back many times in the future. Welcome back. Welcome back, Shangi. Let me tell you something. <laughs> After we saw that lipstick message getting wiped away off the yeah. mirror by Tyra, I thought to myself, I said, that seems out of format. Like usually it's the girl that sends the other girl home. She came out of format. She came out of format. She was coming out of format. She was coming off. She was coming <laughs> deep out of pocket and out of format. Um, so I called up Shangela and I said, Shangie, that lipstick message, was that your idea? She said, absolutely. It certainly was. Shangela. It was her lipstick. It was her, her lipstick. Kit. They would yeah. not give her a pen and a paper to say goodbye to her friends and Sahara. So she wrote it on the mirror and she established the protocol for the, basically for the whole series, for the opening of mm -hmm. every episode and the closing with the wiping well they've changed the they they do the wipe down now at the end of the episode don't they um no it now starts at the beginning Does of it? the episode okay and they come back in and they read the lipstick message and then like the lipsticks getting picked out of the box are now the all-stars thing so the lipstick message is really iconic i mean i find that so tasteless that after shangela established the lipsticks as a thing that only thorgy picked her for the actual lipstick. Well. It's the way the cookies crumble. Well. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think that's kind of cool that Shangela was um, a, a trendsetter and had the forethought to do that, you know? Yeah. She makes for good TV, and I'm not surprised that they um, that they invited her back for um, eight or s nine seasons now. How many? She's 17. She's been on, like, a lot. She was yeah. on my season. She was on two, three, four. Was she a zombie on your season? No, she was. She was. They they tried to make us eat her, and I was like, I'm not doing that B-roll stuff. Um, <laughs> they're like, come over here. You're all going to scratch at her and claw. And I was like, bye. I she, learned by watching yeah, other she, people, and I don't, I'm not going to do that mm -hmm. because I'm not just going to eat a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tyra. <laughs> um, she jumped out of a box in my season. Um, oh. Yeah, and we were all like, oh. <laughs> I remember the cameras being on me though and clapping going, Hey, yeah, just, you know, and then we were, we had to break for a moment and they told us we were on ice, which means don't talk. And I was looking at her and she was just smiling the whole time, knew where all the cameras were. And I was like, okay, we're going to play this game. <laughs> I can do that too, Hollywood. Um, the episode starts with more hotel BTS of bulges and um, various uh, halftrons getting into boy mode. Um, right. It's important for a wider audience. But the bold shots, well, really? Well, we have to make it clear. These are men <laughs> dressing like women. And that's just Mystique. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's not a plural. Um, if you walk into the workroom and see the lipstick message, um, you know that, you know, Sahara and Shangela were sisters and it's kind of sad. And Tyra wipes away all that gravitas and just says, well, she we don't need this no more. Yeah, usually it's the person who sends them home who has this sentimental moment. Tyra's like, well, this is my station, so pss, pss, pss. <laughs> I tried to tell him I wouldn't wipe off Jigglies because um, I didn't want to be seen cleaning on television. <laughs> oh, you're such an asshole! <laughs> I know. <laughs> what? I was just being difficult because I knew that I was going home with so, them. That is difficult Isn't behavior. It? I don't want to be seen cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that they said I was difficult. I don't get it. That's so crazy. I yeah. mean, what a mischaracterization. Totally. Um, the video message this week is uh, a weather forecast full of slang ending with somebody's going to make it rain. Exactly. Which either means precipitation or um, a Helen Hunt movie. Moisture. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And you can street walk a mile in my shoes. 
Okay, oh. that's what RuPaul says. So we're putting together what this could possibly be all about. Meanwhile, she's in a house shoe under the judging table. Well. Well, good for her. Um, the mini challenge is uh, making over a RuPaul doll, a supermodel doll, from a lady to a tramp. Have you ever had one of those dolls? Mm, can't say I have. Me and Sharon had one. She got it in the divorce, but they're really beautiful. Oh. I want one. They're well made. I know Matthew had a hand in it. They're really cool. Yeah. Um, the girls have to work in pairs for the doll makeovers, and Mystique ends up alone. But she says, I work alone. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why they have 30 minutes to make over the dolls, but when we have to do quick drag, they give us 10 for the makeovers. Right. Exactly. Um, the girls get aggressive with the materials once again. They're told to run at a table, which isn't locked down on wheels, and it's just moving Tyra, all over. Tyra hijacks the whole table, and she says, I'm going to steal all the materials so no one has anything to work with. She actually does that. Uh, and so everyone is working with scraps. Tyra is tired for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll say it right there because that's, you know, you don't need to um, handicap other people to get a leg up. Right. You don't have to. In my in my opinion. I don't know. Um, the, Everyone still was fierce, though. Yeah, the dolls looked kind of great. Um, yeah. And, of course, the one that won was uh, the one that kept Rue laughing with all the backstory, Pandora and um, somebody. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Pandora and Sahara. Sahara. Yeah, Pandora and Sahara. I personally like the sequin thong because that yeah. is, it's just great for getting rid of fissures. If you, if you <laughs> what is a nice, that, exfoliate? Mm -hmm, exactly, just <laughs> slices it right off. <laughs> you get those good sharp sequins. Mm -hmm, that, a paillette. Yeah, they'll yeah. really cut you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that Rue looks, the Rue doll looks a lot like the star booty challenge that was assigned. So that makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. And it had a lot of detail and it had a story. It was like, she was missing a shoe mm -hmm. and, but she had the heel in her hand. Yeah. So now, like, that's funny. Yeah. It's a backstory. It's a weapon too. A shoe can always be a weapon. And if you don't know that, you're not familiar with Flotilla DeBarge. <laughs> hey, Flotilla. She doesn't listen to the podcast, but if you know Flotilla, um, tell her we said hi. And I would not fuck with her, especially if she has a shoe in her, her hand. Yeah. Yeah, look her up if you don't know about Flotilla DeBarge. I met her at Wigstock. She, she was, was really so sweet. great. This girl was walking through her station. She said, keep it moving. Oh, my God. She said, like, literally, just keep it moving. I was like, damn, right in the mirror at her. Damn. So, she said, get out of my mirror. <laughs> <laughs> um, so whoever, oh, the girl that won the challenge, her name is Shafri for all. Yeah, Shafri for all. Which I think is, um, oh, and they even gave her a root. See, it's the full details. of details. Mm -hmm. It's really, you don't need a lot of materials, but but you it just, the details tell the story. Yeah, you want to tell the story for sure. Yeah. They gave her a good old root. Mm -hmm. A rooted wig. A one root on a 613. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A 1B. A 1B. 1B on a 613. <laughs> yeah. A zero. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't know what that means, uh, you probably don't do drag or shop for wigs. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, <laughs> My God, these they break up into teams. Mm -hmm. So Pandora and Sahara become the team captains, and they choose teams. And uh, <laughs> Raven says Nicole was picked last because this is a sexy contest, and she's not sexy. Mm -hmm. She specifically says Nicole cannot bring sexy back. Right, and yes. um, I. I'm just a little shocked at that because Nicole is, you know, she's cute. And everybody thinks real girl, real girl. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily equate to sexy. Right. But, I mean, Nicole Page Brooks doesn't know that because she delivers sex on the regular. If you see her as social, she is out there in the panties and the, and the pasties. She does, she does sexy. She does sexual. I've seen her in a strappy sandal. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. Were you ever a team captain? Um, uh, I, I can't, I can't remember. In all your Probably, seasons, probably. yeah, because, um, because I won a lot of mini challenges. Oh. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the, the team picking is always one of those things that will be used against someone at some point. And, uh, oh, it's full of juice. Yeah, um, yeah. When I was team captain, I did the fairest thing I could think of, which was blind handing out. Right things. Oh wait, no, that was when I won the boat thing. When I was when I got to pick teams, that was a different one, and I just picked Dita, Princess, and Jiggly because those are the girls I wanted. The wrestling challenge, that was it. Um, right. But there was that whole "Why didn't you pick me?" feeling in the room about 
which we have here as well. Because mm-hmm. Tyra is like, why, why, Pandora, why didn't you pick me? I'm stuck with these bitches. I wanted to be with the tall, pretty girls. Yeah, she is butthurt about it, and she makes no bones about not wanting to participate <laughs> in the mini challenge or the rehearsal. There's Tyra, I would, I would say she's being difficult during this process. Now, I mean, it, the, the average bedside viewer could say she is being difficult, but do you think it was strategy too? Just saying, I'm not going to rehearse. They're going to think I'm suck and then I'm going to turn it out. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what goes on in that head. I'm not sure, but she's agitating on purpose. Like she's agitating everyone. She's like, oh, team leader, guess what? This fabric you picked is horrible. Well, at least she was nice enough to say, can I say something first? Can I say something? This fabric fucking it's sucks. It's shitty. <laughs> yeah. It's shitty fabric. Literally. And then she makes her outfit first and then takes a nap. And then during the rehearsal, she stands there, arms crossed. No heels. Giving them nooch. Yeah. For sure. And she said, I can either be a bitch or I can be an even bigger bitch if my feet hurt. (laughs) Um, And she is, I mean, marking is when you usually like, you know, you half-ass a dance to save for the performance. She's barely, she's not even marking. I mean, She's she give, marking a mark. It's, it's, it's a step touch, and she is literally just giving a hip. A shuffle. A sh- a, <laughs> she's a shuffle. It's not even a truffle shuffle, because truffles are expensive. Um, I think that... So, yeah, they go out to talk with the pole dancer instructors. Mm-hmm. The pole dancer We're instructors gorgeous. are gorgeous women who teach them how to drop it like it's hot. Yeah. And um, Mystique gets up there and starts dropping it like she's waiting for the microwave for sure. Is that what dropping it like it's hot is? Is that what that is? Dropping it like it's hot comes from the um, game, I think, Hot Potato, because you don't want to drop it because it's hot, maybe? Really? I don't know. I thought... They were twerking, but this was before the word twerking was like a word. So yeah. is dropping it like it's hot the predecessor to twerking? I'm asking Big Dipper because he's in the room. And oh, he, wait. He's an expert on wait. this topic. What do you do if you get something hot in your hand? You drop it because it's hot. So drop it like yeah. it's hot. But don't you also remember oh. the, hot, the hot boys? Hot, hot, hot wing, boys. Juvenile. Hot boys. Drop it like it's hot. Drop, drop, drop it like it's hot. hot. Right. It's, yeah. So I think it was. it's exactly what you're saying. It's before the popularization of the word twerk. But those boys probably got it from literally it, dropping something. Okay, so we have, a, we have an online thing from Kane. Specifically, it refers to a dance move where a person, usually a woman, bends over or bends her knees and drops toward the floor, emphasizing her butt. Okay. Yeah, and now we call that twerking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Fair. I'm glad we cleared this up. <laughs> Race chaser, getting to the bottom of it. I thought your verse. Investigative, <laughs> investigative reporting. Robert Stack, cue the fog <laughs> on this episode. <laughs> um, I think the tension is palpable between Tyra and her group. Uh, she doesn't even pretend to listen to Sahara about anything, and um, Mystique tells her to stop complaining and literally says she doesn't do any even in the rehear even with the instructors she says i'm not i'm not going on the poll i'm not doing it which in I'm, my I head do it, i'm not doing it i i see that as maybe a strategy of i don't want to do draggy things out of drag there's some girls that I like she's that kind she's of girl. very that because she's full package or nothing at all you know yeah. she gives it 100 on stage the smile the hair the outfit the presentation or zilch yeah and this is a zilch moment for sure yeah which I kind of, I mean, I kind of respect. To I kind each of their own. Yeah. She's like, no, that kind of behavior is reserved for the character of Tyra. So if I'm going to be on TV, if I am my, you know, my male self, mm-hmm. he doesn't do that. James. Yeah. James. Um, but she also deems the behavior as hoish. Right. Which, like, girl. <laughs> Well, I mean, it is, but that's the challenge. Exactly. I mean, you're walking a mile in Rue shoes, and, you know, we all been hoes at one point in our lives. Right. Oh, and then, then there's Fabric Gate. Drag queens do be known for their sticky fingers sometimes. Well, but uh, this is the... Everyone just wants to have a fight, because that team took five different fabrics, because Tyra said, we should all be dressed in a different fabric. But Sahara said, no, we're not doing that. We're only using this fabric. Mm-hmm. So they weren't using the iridescent rainbow zebra print. They weren't going to use that. The other team knew that. So they went over and they like picked it up. While the other team were on the poles practicing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Well, okay, maybe they should have waited. Mm -hmm. But it also is a non-issue because they weren't going to use the fabric. And Tatiana had heard with her ears that they weren't using it. They were going to use the same. And then when they were called out on it, Tati was quite vocal and said, I have ears. Don't try that. And then Juju yeah. says, you trying to get fierce with me, Miss Tati? <laughs> and then she says, no, but you need to think. She says, I think a lot. And you need to think a little harder. And it got into one of those. And it was, it was, uh, it was a good little tiff. I'd say it was a tiff. A toddy tiff bit. A toddy tiff bit. Um, <laughs> faux show. Um, Are you trying to be fierce to me, Miss Tati? Ooh. No! I think they're cute. Uh, making sure, girl, just making sure. You think a lot, don't you? But I you do. you think wrong all the time. You should think harder. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank we got you. another thank you. We got our third thank you of another the year. Another thank you on the thank you counter. The thank you. Put a put a put a dime in the thank you bucket. Tatiana is um, one of those people, though. She's see, she's very soft spoken and she's very like sweet and like petite. And so thank you. I I think <laughs> I think people think they can kind of you know take advantage of that. She is not the one. But she is absolutely not the one. Like she will clap back really fast and really like she's. She's there with She's that. not the one. She's never been mistaken for the one. No, ma'am. Uh -uh, not at all. No. Um, I think that Sahara shows a lot of class and says, did you need this? Do you want this? You can have it. You just, you know. She's a classy woman. Yeah, she is. And that, you know, I think that has something to do with like growing up in Texas. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of Texas girls are good fucking queens and they're fair. Yes. And they're, I love Texas. Dallas and S4 is my favorite spot to work, honestly. Yeah. Um. I'll tell you my favorite spot not to work is on a team with Tyra because the bitch is taking a nap. <laughs> and if there's a girl I know that could sew her costume in five minutes, some of those other girls could have used some help. And if, if That's I, true. if I could help a girl and she's on my team and it's a team challenge, I would, you know, what if she was really feeling fatigued? Uh, I mean, I kind of side with Tyra on this. It, it is an exhausting process of filming Drag Race, but it is. And she's like, I did my work and like, I just need a rest. I did my work. None of these <laughs> girls like me. I don't like them. I'm going to go take a nap. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what it was. I think it could have easily turned into a, um, uh, do I have something on my face moment mm -hmm. with uh, RuPaul and Tyra? Yeah. Which it seemed like it was going to be like, uh oh, she's in trouble. But RuPaul was like, okay, go back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Tyra's responses were really good. She was like, I have no doubts about what I'm going to deliver. And she did. She was succinct yeah. about it and she was correct, which yeah. I mean, I think that kind of uh, vindic vind vindicates. Vindicates. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she vilified herself already, so now she's vindicating herself. <laughs> um, well, we'll get into the main challenge when we come back. You want to talk about reading, honey? Let's talk about reading. Yeah, it's so outdated. Well, fine. Let's talk about listening. Oh, you want to talk about listening? <laughs> well, I want to hear a lot more about Audible. Audible. I know you've heard of them. They're a leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment on the internet. Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks and other audio products. It's a better way to binge the content that you love mm, or true. the content you don't know that you love yet because you haven't had the time to read it. Mm -hmm. It works for me because I'm always doing so many things and I can just throw the headphones in and focus on the information. Exactly. Like when I'm stoning all of my tights. Yourself? Or when I'm listening to your book. I can, so I can stone my tights and I can also listen to your book, Suck Less. And learn about being a businesswoman. I have lots of wisdom, you know. I am an authoress with a Dewey Decimal number. It's true, Dewey Decimal, don't lie. Do we don't. So Audible, <laughs> Audible content, they have an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine, and newspaper publishers. What I like is you can kind of do a bookmark, too, between your devices, picking yeah. up exactly where you left off, off your, that. like, you know, your phone, your car, your tablet, or at home on Amazon Echo, even, which is, like, how cool. Amazon Echo, please play Suck Less by yeah. Willam Belli. Thank you. Yeah, I like that it's hands-free and eyes-free, because I'm usually doing the most, and shopping for gowns. You, you do the most. You know, um, rhinestoning my eyeballs, whatever. And Audible <laughs> fits in anywhere I want it to fit in. Audible is offering 
all of you race chasers out there, a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. So all you do is go to audible.com slash drag and browse this unmatched selection of audio programs. You download a title free and you start listening. So it's great to be a member. Mm, I love a member. Mm-hmm. Audible oh, members specifically get more than ever before. Each month, they get three titles of their choice, one audiobook, two Audible originals, and fitness programs that they can't get anywhere else. Oh, my gosh. Damn. Plus, once you get a book, it's yours to keep. So with Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. It's I don't that know why easy. You would, but. Yeah, I wouldn't. Go to audible.com slash drag. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash D-R-A-G. Or text drag, drag. to 500-500 and you can get started today. I personally right now am listening to Full Service, My Adventures in Hollywood and the Secret Sex Lives of the Stars. He was this old school like kind of uh, pimp back in the day. Yeah. And uh, he's got lots of things. I've heard of this book. Yeah, it's really cool. They have a documentary about it, but I wanted to get more into the details of the That'd things. That'd be a fun one to listen to. Almost as fun as Suck Less by Willam Bell I. <laughs> Where there's a Willam, there's a... Way. Anyway... That's audible.com slash drag to get started today. Yeah. I want to talk about this one book. Okay. I'm really into Eckhart Tolle right now. Oh, it's who? very spiritual. Wait, does she do Britney? Very woo-woo. No, she doesn't do Britney. Oh. She's she's not a Fort Lauderdale queen. She one of those Dragula girls? No. <laughs> She staples shit to her head. <laughs> no, the uh, so there's the, there's a book. I mean, his main book is called The Power of Now, which that's the huge one. Oh, I've heard got, of that. Got really huge on Oprah, but he has other books. Um, the Joy of Being is one that I I have nine hours and twenty nine minutes remaining on it, so that's a few flights. Mm-hmm. And um, I love these for a flight. It puts me in a really good headspace to just have his like soothing voice in my brain. Yeah, because nothing makes you look smarter when you're like, oh, I'm reading this book. You know, it's it's audible. Dot com slash drag. Drag. Um, I have ears and they work really well. Me Willem. too. <laughs> oh, oh, you think? You think? You think a lot, don't you? You think wrong. You need to think better because you're wrong. <laughs> Are you being fierce to me, Miss Willow? <laughs> oh my goodness. I do love a tiff. Um, I know on my season, <laughs> when we had, when I had extra things, um, the girl that wanted them was kind enough to ask if uh, she could have them. And I said, I'll let you know. And then, <laughs> like, those feet feet? yeah. And then after talking to Latrice, Latrice said, "Okay, you can give her this because Latrice was in charge, right?" Um, and then I gave her stuff. I gave her feathers, which I thought were going to be at the bottom of her dress. She puts it around her waist, makes herself look bigger. <laughs> I was like, "Jesus loves me." She got um, feather bows. Yeah, right at the waist. Never not a at the feather waist. at the waist. Uh uh-uh. uh Not in the least. But um, this main challenge is not about putting stuff on. It's about taking it off. And yes. the, these girls are doing the gig at the Firefly. It's and the Dragonfly. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever done a gig at the Dragonfly? I, I have. I did um, Showgirls in Drag with Detox and oh, Vicky. And, oh, that's fierce. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's um, terrible dressing rooms, cracked mirrors. Um, wow. I had my costume stolen. Oh. I did. Who like, would want to steal those? It was Diesel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know I, I'm just kidding. You know I love a designer. <laughs> Breaking out the diesel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I think that... Stealing Wolf's <laughs> diesel. <laughs> Whoever took that garment is in Costa Rica. I'm kidding. Oh, my God. Uh, the guest judges come out for this. Uh, These are story. great guests. Kim yeah. Coles and Dita Von Teese. Mm-hmm. Those are great guests. Yes. I, I'm a fan of both. Um, the, the twist of this challenge is after making their stripper hoochie outfits, they have to go and day walk and sell cherry pie. This is, this is hard all around this challenge. It is. It's hard to watch. And it was probably just as hard for the girls to do because day walking. Here's okay. Mm. Here's why this is uh, okay. Not every drag queen can serve like sex. Okay. Yes. It's not on everybody's, like, wheelhouse menu at mm-hmm. all. I don't know. I would have to, like, turn it to something humorous, I think, for doing a pole dancing 
trying to get money from people. Same, because I have no rhythm. Right. So it's like, that's where, so that's a challenge. Also, so you know that you have to do a stripper thing, so you're going to dress like a stripper. Mm Mm-hmm. But then at the last minute, they tell you you have to go walk on the street and interact with people and try and sell them something. That's a totally different outfit, you know? I would never dress in my hoe stripper outfit to go interact with the public on the street because that is kind of like scary to people. It kind of like turns them off. They're like, I, I, I keep my kids away, mm-hmm. you know? That's the stripper and hooker. The, the part of Hollywood that they're in is right by my headquarters and there's a lot of families there Mm -hmm. and when you film people on the street and you want them on the camera you have to get them to sign something so a lot of them don't want to you know oh no no no, i'm not signing so like even if you do have the stripper tv show right what is this cross-dresser uh program no thank you you know like a lot of it is you know you're pulling teeth to get an interaction with someone and it's the middle of the afternoon people don't necessarily want to come out and you know harangue with these drag queens (laughs) for that i would dress something very like colorful campy Mm -hmm. over the top and approachable yeah so that it's like oh look at that that's the that's a drag queen how how fun Mm -hmm. i used to stand by hollywood highland and take polaroids for five dollars with a stolen camera and i wore the (laughs) biggest drag that i had which exactly looking back you know (laughs) but but these girls are dressed like soaking wet Hoar stripper. Whores. <laughs> These are the girls, not the ones you find at the donut time. They're also not the Benino's Tacos girls. They're the ones a little bit more east towards like Gower. Trejo's Tacos? <laughs> Tre- uh, no. They don't go by Trejo's Tacos. No, they don't go. And, but some of them Shakey's? are. Sh- Shakey's Pizza. Um, they put your birthday up on the board. <laughs> um, this is the first time I've ever seen RuPaul's arms. What? Where? Her arm, she's in a red shirt and you see her arms. Oh, like when she's man RuPaul? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. Um, I think that... She's showing skin as well. Skin is in, honey. Honey. Uh, this selling pie gift certificates, it's also a hard challenge because you, you're you selling something and then saying, but go here and redeem it. And then it's like, Huh? It's kind of confusing. Can you imagine going up to someone on the street saying, do you want some pie? And then there's no pie, but there's a coupon <laughs> for pie, but they got to walk a block away and up the street to Las Palmas. Uh-uh. It's a hard thing to sell. It's a hard challenge. Um, and I see why many of them flop. I love Sonique because she's she's not sassy. She's bitchy. She doesn't have time for nobody. She says, honey, I don't have any time. Do you got some money for me? How much money you got? <laughs> she says, says, my time is valuable. He, he says, says, so is mine. She said, well, money. you need to hit it then. You need to hit it. Sonique is um, uh, eye-catching on stage. She is interactive. She does all the good tricks that a girl does in a club. She, she knows how to do that. That's like her skill set. Yeah, Sonique knows sexy. She knows sexy. Yeah, and she's a talented performer too. She does back flips, front flips, yeah. uh, pretzel dip dip flips. Yeah, woman. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Um, the choreo seems to be a bit of a challenge for Nicole Page Brooks. Well, right. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, every everyone says it. Um, so she's we're, out of her element. We're not wrong to say it. Um, we're hateful. Um, but not wrong. She's out of her element compared to the other girls, definitely. For sure. Um, who do you think was the better team? Because going into it, I thought Pandora's team was definitely going to be the winner, especially with Sonique's flips and all her uh, accoutrement. Yeah, I think I think that the team with Sonique on it. Yep. I thought they were, they seemed the most like, co- isn't Morgan on her team too? Yeah. Yeah, they seemed the most like together and on the same page. Morgan like, had the stripper Christina hair. Yeah. We're um, like, we understand what this is, and we're going in and we're doing it. Totally. The um, other girls were a little more disjointed, I thought. Yeah, and it seemed like the other girls didn't want to be on the same team anyway. Some like Tati was embarrassed by the other girls on the street, and Tyra made yeah. no bones about <laughs> wanting to throw bones at bitches. Um, no bones, honey. No bones. Uh, Sahara really impressed the judges, I thought, because her group routine was, um, you know... It got the crowd going, and anytime the crowd gets going and yeah. screaming and hooting and hollering, that's when you know you peek your head out from backstage like, oh, what'd she do? she do a split? Oh, man. <laughs> they ain't going to have no money for me. It was very that kind of performance. Yeah. The good production number. <laughs> 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 the overture's on. The show is about to start. Juju, she knew that she wasn't going to – dancing wasn't her gold. Mm-hmm. So 
she uh, did a lip gloss bit. I see. I call that the Coco Peru because really? Coco Peru was telling me about mm-hmm. her audition for Tu Wong Fu, where she was told that she had to work the runway and then do a walk, a sec, like you know, give it your all in front of all yeah. these girls: Candace, Lena, all the New York girls. So all the New York girls went up and they did their splits and fierce, their fierce, flips fierce. and their voguing mm-hmm. and their this. So Coco was like, "What do I do?" So she grabs a paper cup and mm-hmm. she sips it and then she crumbles it at the end of the runway and the room went up. It is legend. And that actually made it into the movie. She inspired a whole bit that ended up in Tu Wong Fu. And it's kind of cool, you know, yeah. that if you're presented with a challenge, you say, how do I make this me? And then you do it. And Juju did that. Yeah. I think Juju is one of my favorite queens ever for that reason. You know, she can always flip it. She's got a good mouth on her. She's pretty. All that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sahara did the splits on the street for $20, though, and that's admirable, too. See? she And she has a very approachable personality. Yeah. So she, she's from... She was from New York, and that's a very... You're interacting with people on the street because there's so many people everywhere. Mm-hmm. So you're in the subway. For like, sure. You're like... So... She very much was that. So she was probably like, hey, do you want to see me do a fucking thing? Give me the coin. Yeah. And that's a, and it worked, you know? Her team made more money, right? Yep, she won. Good for her. Hallelujah. Tyra jumped on a lamppost and started yelling in a baritone. Would you like to buy some cherry pie? Juju says, think more soprano. <laughs> Be a soprano girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mystique does a jump split. Um, That's her old faithful, mm-hmm. and it gets the crowd going. She does it off of a platform onto the ground, but again, <laughs> she has that hand up to stabilize. Um, <laughs> it still gets the crowd going. It still gets them going. They also put it in slow motion. They are. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. A slow mo ho is the way to go. <laughs> Faux show. She jumps, she splits. The, sh- <laughs> the shimmery black tights. RuPaul's mouth is agape. <laughs> <laughs> um wow juju's makeup is flawless and blended and she's not she doesn't even have liner on yet look at that god damn she's beautiful yeah she really is gorgeous mm, just a little juju bit they have sort of a soft moment here um when they're painting yeah a little painting party moment yeah and pandora's talking about her father who's struggling with cancer and um juju's father passed away because of cancer and so this is like, these are those moments where you get to see behind the fierce exterior mm-hmm. and see that these are people and they have real lives and real things going on. Yeah, it's um, it's nice to see that. But I also like the shenaniganery about uh, someone stealing Miss Shauna Brooks 8x10. Nicole Page Brooks <laughs> is looking for her mother's photo. Excuse me. <laughs> oh my God, I've been robbed. Will the person who stole an 8x10 of Shauna Brooks please return it? It just won't do. <laughs> It just won't do. Um, and then she's later talking about, uh, well, A, she puts out the picture, the framed picture of her son next to her when she paints mm-hmm. so people can have a reference of what they're talking about. Nicole Page Brooks has a son. And yeah. she says that uh, she hopes he can be proud of her one day that she's a drag superstar. Um, yes. Which is nice. And she's going to show him the, the show eventually, I guess she said. Um, my parents go to my shows all the time. Do your parents go to your, your of course your parents go to your shows. Yeah. I, I've, I've had quite a few interactions with your mother and she's a good time. She is. She likes to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Your whole family actually is lovely. Yeah. Um, well, after we take this break, let's come back and do the runway. Aww. Hey, Race Chasers, you know what we do at Race Chaser? We uh, we love Med Men. That is the tea and the truth. Yeah. Now, wh- the thing about cannabis consumers today is they are everyone and they are everywhere. That's the truth. She walks among he. Yes, she do. Mm-hmm. It's no longer the stone or the slacker hanging out. No. Uh, cannabis is for everyone in every walk of life. Yeah, especially if you're over 21 years of age because... Well, that's the that's the rules. Yeah, you listeners, you can take advantage of this amazing offer, whether you're a queen, an artist, an executive, you could be whatever you want to be as long as you're a customer of MedMen. That is the truth. Because they are lovely and they are they treat their customers lovely too. It's yeah. like, you know, you feel like you're going into a spot where you can ask your friend, hey, what does this vape pen do? Or like, you know, 
can this flower like help me sleep or you know my sciatica whatever yeah i mean they have a huge selection of products they have flower which is like the actual buds Mm -hmm. um they have lotions they have vape pens which are very convenient got my packs from there Uh uh-huh and they they explained it too they helped me set it up they have edibles if you don't want to do that smoking action Mm -hmm. they have bath bombs boom boom tell me there's a bath bomb bomb. (laughs) Um, they also have a lemonade, which was super. I've had it. Oh I shopped God. there personally yeah. in the WeHo store. And, um, you're not just a spokesmodel. You're also a customer. I'm also a client. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of incredible. It's If I ever have a question, there's someone there, and they're wildly knowledgeable. I was like, you know all this? Yeah. It's like being a sommelier except for cannabis. Yeah. You can check out one of their 14 retail locations all throughout Los Angeles. We got Orange County, San Diego, and now there's a brand new store right off the Las Vegas Strip at Paradise and Harmon. Mm, Party. Um, So go to medmen.com to find your nearest store. That's M-E-D-M-E-N dot com. And this is just for you race chasers. You visit any MedMen store and you mention the code Drag a checkout and you get ten dollars off your order. Keep out of reach of children for use only by adults twenty one years of age or older. Check out Med Men now. Excuse me, I had a pen here <laughs> and it's gone and someone took it. <laughs> and also I had an eight by ten of Shadow Brooks here. Signed. That was signed and is no longer there. Yeah. So I'm not saying anyone here stole it, but someone who is here stole it. <laughs> That's always fun to do in a room. I had something taken during my episode of my time on Drag Race. And um, I know it wasn't one of the girls because we were all in the same room elsewhere together. Um, and I found that kind of suspicious. And I didn't know if they... It's weird when something is taken and you're like, okay, what's my recourse? Do I go crazy and blame production who I knew took it? Or do I blame another girl who I knew didn't take it and give them the TV they want? I did. I chose uh, neither and just was quiet about it. Um, but when things are taken in a drag dressing room, it's the worst feeling in the world. Have you ever had anything stolen in a dressing room? Well, it's the last thing you want to do is start accusing people because as soon as you do, mm-hmm. you find it in your stuff and you realize that you just put it in the wrong place. So I repeat the question. Have you ever had anything mopped? Uh... I- you know, I and it, I don't even think it's like a knock on wood thing, but like, no, I never have. And have you ever mopped? No, of course, of course not. I'm. I mean, it's. I I have been really lucky, and like, I don't know. I think for the most part, drag queens are really respectful of one another, and like, we still maintain. I'm serious. You're making a horrified face right now, but I'm serious. Like, and I think that our community maintains like integrity in that way. Yeah. Do you like, rem- it's not cool to steal from people. Yeah. Do you remember that gig in Denver that we just did at tracks? I think and we went in the dressing room and the first thing I did was cannibalize a bouquet to put flowers in my hair. <laughs> I was like, y'all didn't need these, right? Like, <laughs> I literally got tangled in the lace oh, and the hair wouldn't come out. Then Anthony started to yell at me. <laughs> that was bad. Um, no, I, and in that, in that same dressing room, I remember um, you borrowed a shirt that I wore on Beatdown, and then someone said, "Oh, look, the, you know they share drag and stuff." And like I remember, you gave that back. You're a very good queen. I have stolen things from other girls unintentionally, like, "Oh, this is your ring. Where can I wear your ring with this?" Or you know, mm-hmm. I've always tried to give it back, though. Yeah, I mean, unintentional. That's different. Yeah, because then it was borrowed. And you forgot to give it back. I still have a wig from Ivy Winters, which was on Battle of the Seasons about fucking four years ago. (laughs) So I still have that, but I still have every intention of giving it back. We're on the Heels of Hell tour uh, this October. She's there. And she's there. Okay, I'll bring it. Me, Latrice, Aja, Sharon, you, me, um, me. I forget who else. But that's in uh, the UK. Holy Trinity. Go see us if you're listening. Um, I have definitely stolen some stuff in clubs, kind of, but it's not really stealing if they give it to you because you just go, oh my God, I love that. And then like, thanks. I'm like, where did you get that? I, I want one. Oh, um, I made it. Oh my God, I would do anything for that. It was passed down through generations in my family. Oh, Shauna Brooks made it for me. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, I love it. Could I? No, I couldn't. No. Oh, really? I can have it? Thank you so much. <laughs> and that's how that works, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, it's very real. Just like uh, Tati, very real. 
Let's get into this runway. Let's the, do it. The theme is high class drag, which is open to interpretation. Apparently, yes, it is. Rue looks very high class. She looks amazing, and she's wearing red hair, which I think this is the one of the only times we see this. Your theme is red and wild. Red and wild, honey. Uh, she looks amazing. Um, I'm continually awed and impressed by Matthew and Zaldi's work. Yeah, yeah. The dress is gorgeous. Some of the other girls now. Let me say this: drag queens are have lots of uh, what's the word? Drag queens have lots of ways to look good nowadays. You know, they yeah. have designers, they have people wanting to work mm-hmm. for them. They have like, oh, I'll do this, blah blah blah. Um, especially kimchi. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, back then, just send me the three thousand dollars, and I swear in six months I um, will drive the garments to you. Drive them. But um, I first we need to stop for insulin in Tennessee and also New York. <laughs> also, uh, I died. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm texting you this. So but. good. Um, so on this runway and in, in general during this time period, if you wanted to look good in drag, you either needed money or skill. And some of yeah. these girls have neither, apparently. Um, <laughs> wow. Damn. I said some. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Rue looks great. Uh, there's lots of gowns. Right. I mean, high class usually in drag traditionally is like you're going to wear gown categories. You so put, we're seeing a lot of those. Yeah. You put a good rubber band on the back of that earring, make it into a ring. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jessica Wilde has a whole quinceanero store on. She's got a hat. She's got a bi-level wig. She's got a glove. She's got a bracelet on a glove. Uh-huh. She probably has a nail on under that glove. Probably, yes. Yeah. She's lovely, though. Um, all the presentation in the world. Raven wears the simple uh, Santiali dress. Yeah, that's fair. And a big statement ring, a couple of bracelets, and the... She looks great, though. Yeah. She ends up being in the bottom, but she looks really great. Sahara looks lovely. Sahara's in a fitted pageant custom gown, obviously made for her body. One of the only girls in color, too. Way to stand out, you know? Right. Pandora also chooses um, a color, but it's cheap rayon fabric. They zoom in on that non-backed yeah. uh, interior hem. The shoes match the dress, but I wouldn't know any shoe that wanted to match that dress. It's weird. It doesn't work, uh, but Juju sure does. Juju is a orange cream dream sensation. Right. Is this a hostile takeover? Yeah, which I don't is get. Is that a but reference? It's got to be a reference to this. I mean, <laughs> yeah. here's the thing. If RuPaul says it and you don't laugh, you're in the wrong. Right. And someone's always going to laugh. So then you're like, did I not get the joke? Maybe hostile takeover is a movie. Oh. And um, maybe like Tia Carrere is in it or something. Mm-hmm. And she looks like that. What's, I don't know. What's that quote that um, makes its second appearance? Someone said it. Merle said it um, in the second oh, episode. Oh, Sonique Boom. Oh, yeah. Sonique Boom. Sonique Nika Nika. That one didn't stick. So RuPaul <laughs> went ahead and stole Merle's comment from the last. Merle, on the last episode, Merle said, oh, she's making a Sonique Boom. And no one laughed. <laughs> so this episode, RuPaul is like, oh, she's making a Sonique Boom. And everyone like loses it. Ah! Loses it. They have to repo to one it. afterwards. They lose it. Very that. <laughs> Steal from the best. I certainly do. Mm-hmm. No apologies. Um, the hair and fashion. I mean, it's it's not bad, but it definitely is dated. Well, it was a different time. Yeah, literally. it was. If you could get your hands on a wig, you were lucky. That means if it has bangs, which a lot of these wigs we're seeing do, mm-hmm. and if it's long, lovely. Brown, long, bangs, wigs. We're going to see hundreds of them on season two. Yeah. That was like the aesthetic. That was the life. That was the moment. Lace, lace fronts were not as accessible then. And no. the ones that were, were very expensive. And yeah. um, the, the cheap ones look cheap. And you'll see a lot of them on season three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we see like the growing of drag aesthetics as totally. we go. Yeah. Um, the qualifying... Uh, element for the win of this challenge is whose team made the most money stripping and Sahara's team won so yeah that means Tyra was on the right team exactly hmm. 
Also, Tyra looks amazing. I want to have a moment to talk about Tyra's um, runway because it's iconic. And it's sort of, oh. it's sort of along the lines of what Raven was doing, which was like taking a simple black garment and styling it exquisitely. Mm-hmm. And uh, she does this like pompadour, which was very fashion forward for that moment in time. And they showed the back of it too. It was well done. It was just, it wasn't haphazardly pinned up. It was a French roll into a poofy, oh. nappy pompadour, which I love. The body jewelry. The is styling is really, beautiful. Yeah. I wonder though, I wonder if they cut away and you could see the bra in this open back. No. You can't. Everything is flawless. She is put together well. It may not, it, it reads as expensive, even though we know the elements of it are not. And yeah. that's the key to, I think, making an impact. Morgan's outfit actually looks like it costs some money, but it doesn't look as good, I don't think. the it, She decided to go for executive for um, high class. Sure. Well, why does she carry that purse then? <laughs> high class executive. Yeah, I just I I feel like every if your hair can be big, it should be big. And that wig was flat. Look at Tyra's right. hair. She's come she came out with hair, a look. I I I don't know. She's exquisite. I'm I'm very impressed by all of Tyra's looks right now. And Tatiana is Rihanna at prom. She is. That's how she describes her look. She Which is. it's an actual prom dress. She wears it well. She it's, wears it well. It's hard for <laughs> it's hard for us tall girls to get a dress off the rack because it hits that awkward length. Mm -hmm. That's like just, just that skosh above the ankle where you don't want it to be. Mm -hmm. Shangela's stars born dress was uh, six inches too short, which meant you could see her shoes. So she gave it to a friend and he helped her out with it and added like 10 inches of extra tool and stuff at the bottom. And she turned it out. He did because it looked really good. Stars born. October 5th, yeah. it already happened. <laughs> you can go see it again. again. I, oh, I will have seen it by the time this comes out. It's so good. I can't wait. You're going to live. <clears throat> so this is a difficult moment because the challenge is based off of something quantifiable. Mm-hmm. So... If you didn't collect as many dollars as the other girls, you are going to lose. Mm -hmm. If the cunt didn't get the coin, you're in the can. Yeah. For sure. So it's not about like interpretation or like, oh, we kind of liked your delivery on the runway a little more. It's very clear. It's based off of numbers. Yes. Which I like. Sure. It's countable. And if you didn't want to do the work, if you didn't want to talk to people and put in the work on the street, if you just wanted to be a Debbie Downer on the corner and you didn't make the coin on stage (laughs) either, you will be in the bottom. Learn your words. Damn. Yeah. Sahara wins. Mm -hmm. She gets immunity and a $1,500 package from sequinqueen.com. That's sequinqueen.com. Have you ever done sequin queen? Um, I've looked, but I, I never actually bought them. I would. I I heard you bought them a lot, but what? Um, oh, <laughs> I. <laughs> I was like, I don't. I've always wanted to do sequin queen. I like their stuff, and they take your measurements, and they like. I don't know. Maybe I will. Yeah, just for fun to just try for, it out. Just for fun, try drag. Yeah, yeah. Um, try drag. One hundred try drag. This this uh, is the staple of every reality show coming up, where they do the who do you think should go home. And why? And why? Mm-hmm. And I like that some of the girls are t- are still smart, where they're like, "Oh, well, send them all home," you know, or um, right the the smart way. Um, did you ever have to be in front of that firing squad? Yes. Who did you say? I said Jinx, and then I cried and untucked and told her I didn't mean it. Who did you really mean? Uh, no, I meant Jinx, oh. but <laughs> I felt bad, you know. So you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've, no, I think the reasons I gave were not accurate, uh, and so I didn't. I didn't mean that. Sure, I don't know. I, I don't know what I said. I'm sure I was asked though. Well, could you please bring back my eight by ten of shot of books? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to an eight by ten with and only sell um, copies of Sean of Brooks's eight photos. Eight by tens of Sean of Brooks. Stolen, mopped. <laughs> we'll sell those at our live events. Right. <laughs> um, once again, we have a thank you for Tati. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, because she and Raven kind of get into it. Yeah. Raven reads her because Raven's like, well, I would have made more money if I just laid on the end of the stage and let the guys throw money on me. Which her, I mean, that was one of the things. She was doing more pole work and platform work mm. <laughs> and so didn't have enough, as much one-on-one time with the guys to get the dollars. Sure. I mean, Raven is a, is a um, what's the word? Um, well, bitch. Um, but there's also... Bristly? Yeah, she's prickly. Brace she's prickly sometimes. Okay. Like when you shave your arms two days ago. Right. Um, but she's a great performer. And when she's on stage, you can't not look at her. And even just the simple movements of like the hands walking up the arm sure. on, on this lip sync that's coming up because she is in the bottom two are, you know, you want to watch her. She's beautiful to look at. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. Very Hitchcock to me. Yeah. But Raven says that Tatiana is just interested in being a pretty girl. I don't think she wants to be like a grand, a grand superstar diva. I think she's comfortable being a beautiful girl. No, <laughs> not the case. If I was comfortable being a beautiful girl, I was a beautiful girl at home. That's not why I'm here to be like pretty. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> the, the payoff of watching this wonderful interaction is seeing Raven's nose which is contoured to look like Tati's actual nose. It's whittled down whittled. to a fine toothpick. <laughs> yeah. Um, she knows her way around a paintbrush. It takes skill to, uh, you know, to to achieve that. Sure. I don't try to. Um, <laughs> no. I think that uh, doing this is a great divisive way to drive the plot forward and to establish, ooh, who don't we like? Who should be in a fight? So it's an right. effective reality programming tool, and I applaud them for it. Hey, it works. Yeah. When it works, it works. Mm-hmm. Bring back the, the girls. girls. Okay, mm-hmm. we're getting there. We're, we're getting, getting closer. closer. Yes, very much so. Um, I could smell it. Yeah. Um, Rue deliberates and decides that, Nicole Page Brooks and Raven will lip sync to My Lovin'. Two, uh... Parentheses, never gonna get two it. Two vixens in brown hair and black dresses. Mm-hmm. Two vixens in brown hair and black dresses enter. <laughs> One remains. And Raven um, does the damn thing. I mean, it's kind of a park and bark until you, now it's time for a breakdown. And Raven marches up the stage on the never gonna get it, never gonna get it. She points to every single girl backstage. Yeah, and Very smart. She's actually right, other than to Tyra. <laughs> right. Um, Foreshadowing. Yeah, which I kind of like. Um, and then she pulls out her titty and blots her face. Which Merle loses her mind. I don't She's think... never conceived Mm-mm. of this bit. A fake breast as a comedy bit? It's I... that great bingo, bingo brunch trick, mm-hmm. girl. The bingo broad. <laughs> yeah, the broad jokes. The and... straight people in the audience uh-huh. are just like, what? I've never seen such a thing. Oh my God, comedy. I'm losing my fucking mind. (laughs) That's why I pull out my balls. People love it. (laughs) Get some going at the bingo brunch. Mm -hmm. Pulling out your balls on a hoverboard. (laughs) (laughs) Taking a shit. (laughs) Taking a shit on a canvas. How dare you bring up my Wigstock performance? (laughs) Um, It's a good... uh, it's a good lip sync song. It is. It's a good one. Um, and Nic- Raven turns it. Nicole Page Brooks, unfortunately, is uh, escorted from the building. Yeah. With her acrylic toenail. Yeah. And uh, and she was great. And uh, we're going to call her now on the break. Out of all the queens of season two, one of them stands out as a truth teller, a catchphrase owner. And to her, we'd like to say thank you. Yeah. And her name is Tatiana. Tatiana. So for this season, we would like to do a little segment we call Tati Tidbits. Um, now, you were just 21 when we went on Drag Race. Were you actually wearing anything from Forever 21 on Drag Race? <laughs> and did you No, back any- then I was a wet seal girl. I love wet seal. I Ooh, good at, old wet seal. Mm-hmm, I worked at the Limbo Lounge and Contempo Casual for a moment. I love oh, wet seal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you have any previous TV experience? 
Oh, no. No, I meant no. were you a transvestite? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> well, to be fair, that's yeah. what I was... <laughs> I mean, I was just putting on crop tops and going to house parties before I, mean, it, 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 <laughs> I was... It so, worked. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's where my uh, knowledge of dressing as a woman came from. It didn't come from, like, performing. I lied yeah. to get on the show. I did, like, two shows in my lifetime before I actually auditioned, so... Oh my god. Well, you did a yeah. lot right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think the goal was always when I was getting in drag, could you get guys? And if you could, that means yeah. you were good at it. <laughs> That's why I was wearing the crop top, was to suck a dick, and I succeeded. Mm -hmm. There's a ringtone. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right there. That's incredible. So, like, performing wasn't a part of it when, before you were on Drag Race. That's astonishing to me, because you're was such an, an amazing performer. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I was always into um, like talent shows and choreography and all that okay. good stuff. So like I had that kind of in my pocket, but right. uh, it was never something that I planned to like be a career. I had just gone to a drag show and was like, oh, I feel like I can put on an outfit and do that. And so I did it twice. I was like, well, that's fun. I guess I should be on a TV show for it now. <laughs> and then I auditioned. Damn. Damn. You make it look so easy. Oh, my goodness. So what was your audition tape like? <laughs> oh, it was treacherous. It's somewhere out there in the bowels of YouTube. Um, oh, near my show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I had to do my runway walk, but I didn't have anywhere big enough to do it. So I found an empty parking garage. Wow. And I, just I love a good park <laughs> drag queen in a parking garage audition tape. Oh, on. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, pe normal people see a parking garage. Drag queens see a runway. Yes, we do. Exactly. Yeah. And we're back. Well, um, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever been a stripper or a streetwalker? <laughs> um, yes and yes. Um, oh, uh. I've been a stripper on at least one or two TV shows or a showgirl. Boston Public? No. <laughs> Boston Legal? <laughs> no. Boston Market? <laughs> <laughs> they asked me not to keep 50 feet from the entrance. <laughs> Um, I, I used to be a prostitute, which is well known. Um, and that, but I didn't walk the street. I was always, um, uh, online, kept it classy. Oh, okay. Um, uh, premier escorts we were called. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't, I've never stripped professionally, but, um, I have no, been known to put on a show or two, a traveling yes. dog and pony show. Yes. Especially with that one guy who liked to watch dog porn while I blew him. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I've I've definitely been um, a streetwalker on multiple shows, but I yeah. and I used to catch flack for it because they're like, oh, this is a bad example for the community, you know, all these uh, drag queen hooker roles and stuff. But here's the thing: I'm a drag queen, and I've actually mm -hmm. been a hooker, so I don't feel bad playing a drag queen hooker. I yeah. know that it probably um, lends itself to illusions of. Uh, transgendered people only being able to find work in the sex work arena which mm -hmm. is terrible and um but people write stuff about stuff that's true sometimes and some of that's true and i mean it is in my case um I'm, i just took a, a job on a show that one of my friends said no to um he wouldn't do it it was a sitcom i think for netflix with michael douglas and ann margaret and stuff and um I didn't want to pass up the chance to work with them. And it was a streetwalker role and I did it. And Chuck Lorre directed it, which was great working with him. But yeah. um, it did give me pause. And I'm like, fuck, should I do this? And I was like, yeah, you know what? I can own this. Um, yeah. And I got to work with Michael Douglas. It's called The Kaminsky Method. It's out next year. Oh, work. Um, have you ever been a stripper or a streetwalker? Well, I mean, speaking to that, it's like it is a large part of a lot of people's story yeah. in our community. And I also think that... You have a large part. <laughs> well, <laughs> I also think sex workers are not something that we should be afraid of or who should be marginalized or should be, like, looked down upon. Yeah, we say who, we say where, we say when, we say how much. Exactly. And a lot of the sex workers that I know are... It is the reason they're put on this earth. Like, they love it. And they... they give something to people that the people can't get anywhere else. I'm on prep. Don't look at me when you said that. 
<laughs> but like it's a I mean it's physical affection and it's like and and it's providing that. Yeah, did you see that Helen Hunt movie? Um where no. she she played a um it wasn't called hooking but like it was like she played a a sex worker in some sense or an intimacy partner who dealt with uh handicapped people. And yeah. you know like some of them aren't confident enough or mobile enough to go out and find sex probably. So yeah. she delivered that service and it's, you know, it is kind of important and it's like, you know, the ability to help people without necessarily like, you know, being a nurse. What yeah. if you can't do math? Just hook, you know, cause that's just right. as helpful. Sometimes everybody wants to get off. Yeah. Mm, I think so. So have you ever been a stripper or a hooker? Well, a stripper. I mean, yeah, all the time. Like I, I've seen your reveals. Uh, right, exactly. Like I always like there to be an element of like stripperness mm-hmm. to to Alaska when I'm in drag. So yes, I love that. You ever put on cam shows? S- street walk. Well, you do a cam show for some coin? Probably yeah. not for coin, just for fun. But street walker. Uh, no, maybe. Well. I used to work the door at Foo Bar, and that was very much like I was out on the street dressed in ridiculous, mm-hmm. flamboyant costumery. So that was I get I, I wasn't necessarily like making money. I I couldn't make money as a hooker. Like it didn't work. So I was like, I need to find something else to do for a living for to make money because it didn't work. Did you find something? <laughs> yeah. So now I do drag. I, I had fun at the back door of Fubar a couple times. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody has. It's a very tiny area. Mm, that's not what they said about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think was the most? Speaking of viral things, what was the most memorable and uh, viral? Well, the most memorable slash viral slash memorable moment from episode two. We're just openly reading our We're producer now. We're just reading Big Dipper for his notes. However, these notes are very extensive and very helpful. So thank you for they're, that. They're memorable. <laughs> they're very memorable, very helpful, and very memorable. Very viral, too. Thank you. Well, I have I have one in mind. Do you have one in mind? I, I want to see if I'm we thought think, of the I'm, same one. Hold on, let me think. Okay, okay you think for a second episode. about a memorable or viral or memorable moment. I do. I know which one you're going to go with too because you quote it often. What? Which one? I don't do bitchy. I do sassy. Oh, I like I I uh, yeah. A RuPaulism. I do sassy. I don't do bitchy. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. And it's good advice because there is a fine line. Yeah. Because you can, it's sort of like the Bianca Del Rio thing. It's like, Rape? she'll tell, oh, oh my <laughs> <Rape> God. <jokes? laughs> She's like, she will literally tell someone to like go fuck themselves or mm. whatever. Dying but, fire. But she will do it in a way that it's funny. And so it gives it like, a pass yeah it's not coming from a place of like i really want to hurt you funny always gets a pass yeah yeah and i don't think she wants to hurt us that's just the way she does her makeup <laughs> that is very hurtful yeah <laughs> my my moment was gonna be the uh the tati thing the tati thank yous with the with raven sure yeah i forget what episode this is is this a stripper episode yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this the fabric one? I, I like I like the, the Tati interaction with Juju. We appears to be Miss Tati. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you need to think more because a lot of things you think are wrong. So how about you think about that? Uh, yeah, that's very all that. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, this I mean season two has a lot of great big personalities. I wish they would have more of them back for um All Stars. If they do another All Stars, I'm not sure. So yeah. Sure. Yeah. I would love to see Jessica Wilde up there for an all-star. For sure. Yeah. Um, I think Mystique would be a good all-stars. I think she would. She's yeah. gone through a lot transformation. Yeah, I don't know that she could even be called a big girl anymore because she's lost so much weight. No, she's lost a lot of weight. I think she's like grown as a performer. Be, I would love to see her. Yeah, it would be nice to see Sonique on there again. Sonique, 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 Sonique. <laughs> um, yeah. My time is valuable too, so you better hit it. <laughs> we gotta hit it right now. Thank you so much for joining us on Race Chaser. Yes, thank you. We'll be back the next episode to continue our journey down Drag Race Memory Lane. I'm Willem. I'm Alaska. And you can rate our podcast and comment about mm-hmm. how fantastic it is and subscribe to make sure you know when a new episode comes out. Hint, hint, Wednesdays. 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you can follow the dolls at Willem at the only Alaska 5000. And our Race Chaser podcast is at Race Chaser Pod. That's the new Instagram. So get into it. And you can post about us and tweet us the house boots mm-hmm. and use hashtag Race Chaser. Hit it and clit it. <laughs> Hit it because my time's expensive, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Race Chaser. Race Chaser is not endorsed by World of Wonder, Viacom, or any of their subsidiaries. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. RuPaul's Drag Race and all names, pictures, and audio clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. Forever Dog. Race Chaser with Alaska and Willem is a Forever Dog podcast. Produced by Big Dipper. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Our theme song is Race Chaser by Alaska Thunderfuck, available on iTunes. <laughs>